Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. In this video, we're going to talk about fertilizing time. I put very little fertilizer out in this garden in Raleigh, North Carolina, uh, zone 8A. We have been on this project for uh, coming up on four years, actually. Uh, we This soil is pretty highly amended. It was uh, started with compost and wood chips and uh, hardwood mulch has been put down several times and we're about to mulch again. All of those organic things breaking down and becoming part of our soil structure and improving the soil structure uh, are, we're at a point now where we need very little outside inputs. We can pretty much the cuttings and the material that we're taking off plants, the perennials that are dying back to the ground that we can cut off, uh, we can start to use that material and create more of a closed loop where we're not having to bring a lot of material in uh, from off the property. Uh, but I do put up a fertilizer video once every spring kind of to talk about how little uh, I fertilize. Uh, one thing um, about the fertilizer I'm using, I'm using plant tone. A lot of the plants I have in this garden are acid loving plants. They're plants that like a lower pH. You don't have to use something like holly tone with a soil acidifier in it if your pH is already low. So you should uh, probably base the fertilizer you're using on a pH test. So if your pH is below seven and most of the plants you're growing are things like azaleas and hollies and blueberries and a lot of the things that I show on the channel, abelias and lorapetalum and a lot of plants that like slightly acid soils, uh, my pH in this garden is 5.5. It's kind of perfect for those plants. I don't need to be doing any kind of adjustment to it. So I'm just using the straight plant tone. I don't put out as much as they recommend on the back of the bag. I'll leave all of that up to you. I don't want to disturb uh, my soil when I throw this out. So, you know, some recommendations will be to pull back mulch from the base of plants and, you know, put the fertilizer around it and then put the mulch back. Any disturbance you do of your soil cap, whatever cap that is. Right now for me, it's actually leaves. Well, we left our leaves on the ground through the winter time and any disturbance I do of those is going to expose weed seeds. It's right here at the beginning of March when the soil temperature hits 60, 65 degrees, you start to get weeds germinating. So these exact same time, if I'm out here disturbing the soil all over the place, I'm gonna be pulling up weed seeds. Those weeds are potentially gonna germinate and then I'm going to have additional weed problems. So I take the fertilizer and I throw it out by hand overhead around things. Again, I don't use as much as is recommended, uh, but I don't really need to. We've been working on the soil in other ways. The way that these organic fertilizers work versus synthetic fertilizers is they, number one, they build soil structure. So this organic material that's in here itself uh, builds soil structure, same as compost or humus or, uh, wood chips breaking down, any of those kinds of things are gonna build soil structure. Not as much, because this bag spread out over this entire garden is not a lot of material, but it does build soil structure. The other thing it does is it feeds uh, the soil microbes, the, the way plants naturally get fed. You know, humans aren't out in the woods fertilizing the trees, right? How are they getting what they need? They're getting what they need with a relationship between beneficial bacteria and beneficial fungi a relationship where those things can attach themselves to the roots of the plants. And in exchange for the plant make, doing photosynthesis and creating sugars to feed those microbes, in exchange for that, the microbes basically bring water, nutrients, and all the things that the plants are actually needing to do those processes of making those sugars. And that's the relationship. What organic fertilizers do is they basically feed those soil microbes and then the soil microbes feed the plants, the natural way that this would, be wor would work. Uh, whereas synthetic fertilizers kind of sh uh, typically, not always, but most of the time shortcut that and feed the plant directly and frequently can push your, push your plants too hard. Uh, but they're also not uh, adding to your, the species that are in your garden. So uh, the, the vast majority of the species that are in your garden you know, when we think about what species do I have in my garden, we're gonna think about the, the perennials and the shrubs and the trees and maybe the birds and, and we'll think about maybe earthworms. Most of the species in your garden are actually not things you can see with your eye, right? So they're, they're microbial things that are here to uh, assist these plants because the plants, I mean, I should make a t-shirt so the plants don't need us, really. If we're keeping the ground covered, where they do need us is to keep the ground covered 
with either leaves or mulch or pine straw, whatever the heck it is that's breaking down, and then maybe adding some organic fertilizer. But once you get to a point where we are now, I don't even think I need to be doing this. I make this video partly because I want to show you how little I'm fertilizing once you get to this point where you can, we can, when I started this project, if you walked through the beds, the soil was pretty hard, okay? If we walk in these beds right now, you can actually feel the sponginess under your feet. And that's that soil life that's building soil structure, that's allowing the rain to hit the ground and all soak into the ground rather than running off this property. So it's reserving water for us. And it, again, it's out here feeding uh, and uh, maintaining the plant life without us being involved in it. For me, the best order of things is to get this fertilizer out right around the end of February, the 1st of March, which is a little bit early. Again, the, this fertilizer is feeding the soil microbes and the soil microbes are feeding the plants. Well, you know, when the soil is this cool, which it, you know, we don't get that cold here in Raleigh, but we get cold enough that it shuts the microbial um, activity down in the soil quite a bit. So putting this fertilizer out before that activity picks up is a little early, right? Because I, I, if they're not awake, what's the point of putting it down? But I want to put it down before I mulch because mulch timing is one of the most, to me, the most important thing. Because again, when that soil temperature hits 60, 65 degrees, something like that, that's when the weeds are just going to go crazy. And so I've left these leaves on the ground through the winter to keep some of the winter weeds down, give the birds something to do. If I wasn't out here right now, the robins would be out here flipping these leaves over, looking for things to eat underneath them. And then as soon as I get this fertilizer down, I'm going to, uh, we're gonna mulch. So next week sometime, we're gonna put a mulch cap over the top of this. This will lock this fertilizer in place. That's the reason I'm doing it in this order slightly early. This is stinky stuff. Uh, the the uh, thumbnail photo for this video should be a photo of me and Holly. And then I immediately put her in the house because this stuff, every dog is going to want to uh, to eat this organic fertilizer or play in it or roll in it, depending on the dog that you have. Griffin would probably literally come out here and roll in it uh, and want to smell like it. Uh, so it's pretty funky. I definitely wear a glove, wear clothes that are, you know, you're either are, are already dirty or something that you just don't care about. Um, you also uh, want to wear some sort of mask the way I put it out. The instructions on here would be to put a certain amount at the base of each of your plants with a cup, and that wouldn't be a dust storm. But the way I go about it, um, I'm creating a bit of a dust storm. Just, I, I basically want to just take this large bag of plant tone and distribute it kind of evenly over the entire garden. So I'll show you a bit of that, and it's literally, you know, slinging things. <laughs> uh, but again, a mask, a mask and a glove is definitely needed. And I'll take a small handful and I just throw it like that. But you can see that dust that you're going to get from that. Yeah. Doesn't take, if I had to go around the garden twice, I would in order to get it out evenly. Uh, I don't want to run out somewhere and, and, and run out. I just, this is a, what is this, 36 pounds, I think it is. Oh no, it's just a 50 pound bag. So I want to just distribute this evenly over the entire garden. You don't need to watch me do this entire thing, but I just wanted to demonstrate a bit in one area here. Now, the way I'm going about this, um, two things. Number one, don't do this in the morning if there's dew on your plants, because this fertilizer will stick to those leaves. Also, don't do it on a rainy day. Uh, make sure the leaves on your plants are dry because I don't, I don't want it sticking to them. What I do after I sling this fertilizer out is I go through and I just do this, okay? Real quick and easy, I go over every plant, just give them a little bit of a bounce, and that fertilizer drops down to the ground. And it's a really easy, quick, quick and easy technique. Sling the fertilizer, take the broom around, knock it down to the ground, get my mulch cap on it. You know, a week from now, I got a little edging to do. So I got fertilizing to do edging to do. I'm going to do, a, we'll do a quick lap around this garden, make sure there's no weeds. I pulled uh, ivy that had germinated below my feet uh, when I, as soon as I sat down here. And I'm sure there's a few more of those around the garden, so I wanna get those out. Mulch cap goes on and I'm good to go for the season. Between this fertilizer, all the work we've done over the years uh, in these beds, and the leaves breaking down and the mulch breaking down, 
sticks, twigs, everything else breaking down, we're good to go for the season. Uh, but I do uh, recommend getting a soil test uh, to making sure your pH you know, fits the kind of fertilizer that you're using. If you're using a lot of acid loving plants and your pH is up around seven or higher, you probably want to be using Hollytone. It's a little bit confusing when you go buy fertilizers, whether organic or non-organic. You'll see fertilizers for azaleas, rhododendrons, and camellias. Uh, you don't need those fertilizers if your pH is already in the right spot. Uh, if your P a lower pH uh, creates more iron availability, and those plants are heavy iron feeders to explain why that works. But if your pH is already low, there's iron in your soil in all likelihood, and the plants are going to be fine taking it up. Once, you're, once your pH gets to a certain point over seven, the iron is less and less and less available, even though it's in the soil. And uh, that's where you start to have um, yellowing leaves and uh, issues with iron deficiencies in your plants. So that's it. It's a real quick down and dirty technique of throwing fertilizer out, knocking it off the plants and getting it down to the ground. But I just also want to explain at the same time what makes using an organic fertilizer and also thinking about long term in your garden, long term. We're trying to build soil here, right? We're trying to make a soil that can take care of these plants kind of without us. And by, bring, uh, by keeping it constantly covered in organic material, that will happen over time. Again, these beds were rock hard, and now they're just sponges when you walk. You can feel it responding to your steps under your feet. It's kind of fun uh, over time to see how that soil develops as you work on it. So thank you guys for following along with the channel. Don't forget to subscribe uh, down below, and we'll be back with another video. Likely next week, we'll be mulching the garden. Thanks for watching.